Well, catching up with Claire Barber during the sitting of uh, Timwall, which has been quite amazing in itself, hasn't it, uh, Ms. Barber? Yeah. I mean, just amazing things are going on here. You have also um, been suggesting, I think, that uh, people who work in the health industry can get back into the health industry, which is you, of course. Yeah, so one of the things the Minister raised during his speech was around looking at what resources we have within our community. What's been very clear with the coronavirus outbreak in other areas is the demand on intensive care has been very great and the demand on our wider health services. So when the, this first came to light, one of the first things I did was offer myself to be able to go back. Obviously, intensive care nursing is my background mm -hmm. and to say that if, if the need is there, then absolutely I'll make myself available to the department in that way to go and work on the front line. Is it as easy as that, or do you, is it think hoops you have to jump through, you get you know back to up trained and all that sort of thing? I think. So I've kept my registration ah, up right. um, since since being elected. Um, I think it makes me more accountable as a politician because it means there's something to go back on. I'm never going to make a decision because I need this seat. I'm doing this for the reasons I came in on originally, which is to make the health service a better place. Um, what I will need to do is have face mask fitting, make sure that my mandatory training is up to standard. I've had it in the, all in the past, but it, obviously I'll need to make sure that we're, we're up to speed. Certainly when we've had previous outbreaks of viruses such as swine flu, bird flu, we do mask fitting for our staff to make sure we have the right masks for each person's mm -hmm. face different people's faces suit different masks mm. we need to make sure we've got the right protective equipment for each member of staff but those are the things that we can sort out but what we do certainly need is to have people from the community who may be able to help us out to come and, and contact us that's something we're currently going to contacts that we're aware of but if there are people in the community who do have experience working as a nurse maybe elsewhere or on the island who may have recently retired or equally maybe working just in a in a, a different sector now and they may have chosen to to leave nursing the uk government have announced measures which will allow them to actually enable some of those people back into nursing to support us through this very difficult time there's only six respirators, is that right? I was hearing this today. This doesn't sound anywhere near enough if, if things get as bad as they could get. So the, the situation is that the standard intensive care beds is six beds with six ventilators. Right. There's also backup ventilators and there's transport ventilators and we have facilities within theatres which we would normally ventilate people, for, people on. In a situation such as this, all of that equipment is being currently reviewed, looking at how we can bring that into our wider infrastructure. But... I think lots of people have said we could just go out and buy 20, 30 ventilators, um, but if you haven't got people to operate them, those ventilators are unsafe. Mm -hmm. So what we need is not just the equipment, we need people who are skilled and trained to be able to use them. So one of the pieces that's happening at the minute as well, with the suspension of elective surgery, is looking at skilling people in some of those areas to try and build that network of skilled staff in certain areas in the hospital. There, there's going to be formal processes. The first priority at the minute is around getting the emergency number online, about getting testing up. This will be the next piece of the puzzle. But if people are out there who see this video, I would encourage them to either contact myself or to contact the minister or any other contacts really within the department and we will certainly follow those up because that's something that we are aware we need to do. This is like a wartime spirit isn't it always? I think it's very much about a community spirit yeah. and it's very much about people offering the services that they have and the things that they're able to bring to the table. That's something I recognised early on. It's a skill that I have. It's something that we happen to need. It would be remiss of me to sit here and think, well, I'll just let everyone get on with it. That's not what this is about. This is very much everyone coming together for the good of the Isle of Man.